Hello, everybody. Welcome to the IPVest virtual community meetup. My name is Dietrich Ayala, I'm the ecosystem lead, protocol labs for IPFS. And today we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, first, please share your information in the chat. I see a whole bunch of folks in there. Uh, share with the group where you are coming from, how you're involved in IPFS, or what you want to learn. And if you're currently using IPFS, let us know. Let everybody else know what your what your app is, what your website is, GitHub repo, and what you're using it for. So before we jump in to the main event, I wanted to share this with you, the IPFS Community Code of Conduct. We do have a community code of conduct. Uh, we have standards for behavior. And, uh, and in this community, we want people to feel welcome, for everybody to be able to participate in a way that feels OK with them. And we'll go out of our way to be able to help you if you have any issues in this community. So there's contact information there. Please do reach out and let us know uh, if you need any help at all. Today, we're going to have a couple of different talks. I'm going to give a really quick update now on our plans for the second half of this year. A little quick trip down what happened in the first half of this year. Uh, and then we'll have a few different groups that are building on top of or with IPFS talking about their projects. And we'll finish with lightning talks. It will be an actually packed hour. You're probably familiar with IPFS, but if you're not familiar with IPFS, a really quick refresher. IPFS is a decentralized file sharing system, internet scale, like the internet that you use today, except instead of referencing things by their location, we ask for them by the unique identity of their contents. As you can see in this slide, how we ask for things is a little bit different, and it's called a content address. Some of the problems that IPFS aims to address are some of the shortcomings of the web that we know today. Uh, things like websites going down, DDoSs, censorship, things not working offline, uh, a, a security and trust model that is uh, something that is not really in your control, as well as uh, broken links and major network inefficiencies. Uh, we do this with IPFS on top of a stack that includes IPFS, which is built using other things like IPLD. And we have linking data together, libp2p, a modular P2P networking library that you can build all kinds of things on and that many other projects outside of IPFS use as well as multi-format formats, which is a way of future-proofing and upgrading the web as we move forward. The IPFS community all over the world, I can know from some of the people in the chat, you are coming from different continents than the one that I am on. And uh, at this point, over 4,000 people contributing in the community. Thank you for your contributions. It's amazing. The IPFS ecosystem is comprised of hundreds and hundreds of apps, many different services. Some people are using it for content, some people for infrastructure, some people for ops, and uh, some people for personal data sharing and uh, keeping data alive and storing data as well. Uh, many of the projects that you see here, some of these folks are in the chat. So if you have questions about your given use case or something that you want to do with IPFS, feel free to ask in the chat. Uh, before we get into the second half of the year, let's talk a little bit about the first half of the year. The first half of the year had a really it was was momentous in a few different ways. But one of the biggest was that we launched IPFS 0.5, which was the largest upgrade of performance in IPFS that has happened to date. It was a major change to the protocol, and it was a major change to how IPFS was able to respond to the needs, the growing needs of the people using it. Uh, as network traffic grows and use of IPFS grows, as IPFS grows into different areas and segments and different applications and added to browsers, it uh, needs to be able to perform in a way that meets people's expectations and that can provide them the uh, network performance that, that we need. Uh, so there's a massive improvement here, and there are more yet to come. The way that these improvements were implemented means that the, uh, we'll, we will be able to take more and more advantage of them as, as time goes on. Uh, we also saw a lot of integrations and people building on top of, of IPFS. Uh, IPFS launched in browsers like uh, Opera for Android. Uh, the Wolfram language and Wolfram engine added IPFS support. Uh, new services such as ENS and stoppable domains, who you hear about from later today, uh, and Fleek started popping up. Uh, Ceramic was able to build uh, identity systems and 3Box continuing to build on top of IPFS. And we saw IPFS show up in a few places like the uh, Ethereum foundation website being served on top of it, and Brave Browser actually building a store on top of IPFS. Uh, we saw a bunch of changes in how, how, how we actually build IPFS, how we test IPFS, things like performance improvements. We launched a grants program. 
in, in the first half of the year, major changes to uh, how IPFS core protocol parts work. And then from a contributor experience standpoint, we made a number of changes uh, to how we actually build IPFS and how we make it easier for you to be able to respond and tell us how it's working for you. Uh, we said, well, it, given, given the world is, is, is shut down in a lot of ways, we still uh, took part in a number of different events and hosted different events in the first half of the year. Uh, some of that, which we'll hear both spoke at, uh, participated in, joined, and we're gonna keep doing more of them like this. Uh, and some other things that we, that we changed as well in the first half of the year were how well and how we listen to you, how we listen to what the needs of the developers are, how we listen and identify who's building on IPFS. Uh, we have tools now that scour things like Docker Compose files and GitHub repos and GitHub issues to be able to figure out who's using IPFS, what kind of challenges they're facing, what they're using it for, uh, so that we can better meet their needs as their uh, like as the protocol is growing, as 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 their usage is growing. Uh, also, if you're using any of our IPFS projects like IPFS Companion or IPFS Desktop, uh, IPFS Web UI, you'll have seen a major amount of changes in the first half of the year, uh, a concerted effort to uh, consolidate and make consistent the design of our applications across all the various parts where we actually have user interface and uh, efforts to make it uh, easier. And uh, probably if you're part of our community, you've seen some of the outreach that we've done to be able to get your viewpoints and understand how you're using these tools so that we can uh, prioritize what we fix, how we fix and when. Now let's talk about what's coming next. The second half of the year, the priority for this team, for the IPFS core team, is to drive the IPFS ecosystem and support it and grow it. Uh, we spent the first half of the year making sure that the foundations are strong, that the IPFS core protocol is able to uh, set up in a way to scale into this growth that we're experiencing. And now we want to make sure that we're able to sustain that and to be able to build on top of it internal focus on those core bits of the protocol into understanding what the needs of the people building on IPFS are, how we can meet them best. Uh, we're going to do this in a few different ways. Talk about uh, continuous visibility, uh, understanding who you are, how you're using IPFS, how the protocol is, is holding up, how our implementations of it are doing, uh, maintaining support. So paying attention to Stack Overflow, to the forums, to GitHub issues, and the places where you're uh, either making feature requests or reporting issues uh, and using that to accelerate adoption. So looking for places where we can get IPFS, make it easier to access by people who are not technical, make it easier to use for people to both publish data and to be able to consume it. Uh, the priorities are community maintenance and maintainership, making sure that we're, we're shipping their software on a regular basis. Uh, we're reducing the time that it takes us to be able to ship new updates to the protocol and to the libraries and implementations. Uh, the second priority is driving ecosystem support. So making sure that um, we are listening to the people that are using IPFS, that we're responding to it and actually closing the loop there and fixing those issues. And that we're identifying places where we can get IPFS into more people's hands, like the browser integrations that we'll talk about shortly. And the third is to instrument and hone the newcomers. So understanding who is coming to IPFS now, who are, who are the new people who are coming to the project, who are looking for what IPFS can provide and understanding when and where they either hit a barrier or fall off that path. Uh, if there's anything that we can do to, be able to close those gaps, to be able to provide tools to make it easier to understand when, pro when um, you experience challenges, the, the, the nature of developing for a P2P network is radically different than developing for centralized systems and developing with HTTP. So we need to be able to understand the challenges that people have when they're making that transition and be able to develop tools that, that um, help them get all the way to shipping their applications. So in response to this, we changed up the IPFS working groups a little bit. Uh, the core implementations group is a group that builds both the Go IPFS implementation and the JS IPFS implementation. Uh, the Bifrost working group focuses on our gateway and operational services and making sure that our network services are staying alive and meeting the needs of increased traffic. The ecosystem group is uh, the one that I'm leading right now. We look at uh, community, our collaborations and partners, developer experience and contribute experience. And uh, the fourth group is web browsers and GUI, which is our browser integrations, how we operate and work in when IPFS is running in web content, and also our GUI applications like Companion and IPFS Desktop. Uh, the goals for, for these different groups for this half of the year are what I talked about before, regular releases, making sure that our network operations and services are staying up, uh, identifying opportunities for growth and making sure that the people that are coming to the project are staying on, uh, on the path and are able to get their needs met. 
and then making sure that, and, and building out our browser adoption. So making sure that with IPFS and web content works optimally, that it works for developer needs, and that when uh, browsers that are interested in that we're working with and in integrating IPFS, that those projects are continuing. For this quarter, the Bifrost team is focused on infrastructure for the most part, making sure that security infrastructure is up, that IPFS is serving the Filecoin hosting needs that we have, and that our gateways are staying up and that we have metrics around that. GUI web browsers team is uh, going to be adding a new feature that you'll hear about hopefully in the lightning talk section a little later uh, called pinning services. One of the things that, you know, if you add something to IPFS on your laptop and then you shut your laptop, it's no longer necessarily available on the network. So we want to be able to have a way for people who want to be able to host their data and make sure that it's there all the time can easily do that from within the, the uh, products that we ship. So that's what the pinning services is going to be. And you will see a little bit more of that coming up soon. Uh, we'll also be working on uh, Brave integration and a lot of the high priority issues in our uh, GUI products, like competitive desktop, you want to make sure that those are working for everyone. Uh, the ecosystem group is really focused on systemic views of the project. So uh, looking at overall community needs, making sure that we're meeting our community needs from a communication standpoint, uh, that we have automation to be able to make sure that our small team can actually sustain and survive the incoming amount of questions from all different places like forums, IRC, uh, matrix and Stack Overflow. Uh, we want to be able to understand for DAP developers specifically how well IPFS is working for them. We want to know what tools they're using, what tools they need, whether our documentation is meeting their needs. Um, we, we also want to be able to develop systems of understanding overall project status, both for IPFS and the other projects at Protocol Labs. Uh, we are using a system of dashboards right now, kind of what I mentioned earlier about uh, GitHub repo tracking and crawling to be able to understand where things are growing or shrinking or changing or how IPFS is being used. And we want to build more tools like that so we can leverage that and make this better decisions about what we do with the core protocol and when. Uh, and then finally, identifying and uh, integrating a set of well-understood metrics into the project so we understand uh, whether what, we do, what we're doing is actually working or not. Uh, the core implementations for Go have um, the supporting the pinning ecosystem, again, is pinning services ecosystem because it's a really high priority. Uh, and then a number of things, including a specification for the DHT so that DHT implementations can be implemented in multiple languages instead of just Go. In JavaScript, there's a whole bunch of performance improvements that are coming as well as a few different things like integrations with React Native and TypeScript. We want to be able to provide libraries that work how JavaScript developers are working today and make sure that IPFS is a choice that they can have when they're building their applications. Uh, there's a number of different success metrics that we're looking at. These are some of the ones that we look at today uh, across a couple of different areas, but we don't have visibility into some of these areas. So there's still some work to do for us in both meeting these metrics, but also getting better insight and understanding uh, and, and how they're working for us and whether or not these are the right metrics. Uh, so there's a couple of different tools that we're using to be able to look at these metrics. Some of them are um, you know, basic systems monitoring, and some are custom dashboards that we made to be able to understand the full scope and spectrum of the uh, project. There's more. Uh, Microsoft ION is a decentralized digital identity system that'll be launching later this year that uses IPFS for storage. Uh, UCAM, which maybe we'll hopefully get to a future one of these to be able to do a talk, is a uh, privacy-oriented home security camera that it uses IPFS. And I, I have one of these right now, and I have it sitting in my backyard looking for mooses. So not a typical use case, but hopefully we'll put the product to the test. Uh, the IPFS case study series, you probably saw the first one of these from uh, Audius. Uh, it's now in our docs. It's available to be able to look at how they use IPFS to uh, meet their needs from an architectural standpoint and uh, understand their, their overall topology and how they deployed IPFS. But we have a number of these coming out so we can tell more stories about exactly how uh, projects and companies, organizations are taking IPFS, using it to be able to meet their needs, understanding the, uh, the, the relative costs and benefits of different architectural decisions and choices. More of these coming soon. Uh, and like I said before, the pinning services API, this is currently a specification that is progress. Uh, feedback is really wanted. If you're in interested in either both consuming or hosting uh, pinning service, definitely share your thoughts with us so we can make sure that it meets your needs. Uh, Brave 
IPFS native integration in Brave is coming soon. This is something we've been working with Brave on for some time. And uh, I think that you're going to be able to probably see something around, around in the next couple of months, uh, be able to test IP, a version of Brave that's actually running a native node of, of IPFS. Uh, the grants program still has a number of grants that are in progress and a few new ones. You're going to see uh, maps integration, more and deeper Chromium integrations, and more work with, IP, with uh, Wikipedia and also NixOS uh, coming soon. And finally, there are a number of events that are happening right now in order to prepare for the Filecoin mainnet launch. A lot of these developers are using IPFS heavily, and uh, uh, the HackFS month-long hackathon is, is ending uh, this week, I believe. And the feedback that we've gotten from developers there has been fantastic and be able to understand how people are using IPFS and what things we need to be able to fix both in the core libraries and, and documentation. So that's a view into what H2 will look like for the IPFS project. Thank you so much.